In U25, we classified standing waves in a usual two-dimensional sphere by the number L of nodal lines. Consider a circular line on the equator of the sphere, always for the state M equals L. Each of the L nodal lines crosses this circular line on the equator twice. Therefore, on this equatorial line, two L nodal points arise. That is, always an even number. All other states can be reached by applying the D minus operator. In the 360 degree world, this is the full spectrum of standing waves on a sphere in three dimensions. If we scale the distance to h bar, the quantum states arise. For example, those from the orbitals as shown in U26. What happens, however, if we go from the 360 degree world to the 720 degree world? That is, to the three dimensional sphere in four dimensions. Now, spin states arise, which, as we have seen in U29, are actually nothing but usual standing waves in the 720 degree world. Only due to the mapping into the 360 degree world by winding the amplitude twice onto a circle in 360 degrees, a double valued amplitude arises with a single nodal point. In 360 degrees, the spin states thus fill the gaps. These states have an odd number of nodes in the 360 degree world. The difference between quantum states with an even or odd number of nodes is huge. The so-called bosons are the states that are well known to us from the usual two-dimensional sphere with an even number of nodes. At low temperatures, bosons can condense into the lowest quantum state. There is no ban on multiple occupations of the same state. The so-called fermions have an odd number of nodes. Due to the double-valuedness, which arises upon projecting four dimensions onto three, each state observed in three dimensions can only be occupied at the most once. That is the so-called Pauli exclusion principle. The Pauli exclusion principle is the basis for the stability of matter as discussed in U24. The deeper cause for the stability of the matter thus lies in the projection of the quantum states from the 720 degree quantum dimension into the 360 degree world and the associated double-valuedness of the spin, which we will examine more closely in the next slide.